The opinions and suggestions expressed on the following program are solely those of the participants and not necessarily endorsed by program sponsors or any radio station, media company, or platform broadcasting this program. The following program is a product of Causeway LLC. The information in this broadcast is not intended as investment, tax, or financial advice. Matthew Moore is not a licensed investment advisor and speaks solely from his experience and opinions. All information in this broadcast is for entertainment or educational purposes only. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and the company or platform broadcasting this program is not responsible for the success or failure of any person's investment decisions or purchases. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and the company or platform broadcasting this program makes no and expressly disclaims all representations, warranties, and guarantees with respect to this broadcast and its sponsors. Investing in any market is inherently risky and can be financially dangerous. Invest at your own risk. Coming. Government officials we will continue to do it as this story unfolds. Welcome to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore, the Bitcoin-focused radio show that's waking the masses to the fiat money Ponzi scheme. Money is changing and your freedom is at stake. So stick around and learn how to empower yourself for this new digital age. Now, here's your host, Matthew J. Moore. Welcome, America, and welcome, the world. No matter where you are or what you're doing, I want to welcome you, every single one of you guys, because uh, this show, it's for everybody. So whether you're a Bitcoin newbie, lover, or even an expert, you're now listening to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. And yes, if you haven't guessed already, we are one of the only syndicated radio shows dedicated to the topic of Bitcoin. A show where, get this, you're going to learn about money, liberty, history, technology. We we talk about a lot of topics. And uh, if you've missed the last few episodes, man, I'm telling you what, we have had some great content, some great guests. But on today's show, we're going to talk about a topic that might seem mysterious to some people. It's Bitcoin mining, a great topic, really, uh, to revisit, especially in this brutal bear market. And uh, after all, you know, Bitcoin mining, in my opinion, is one of the most important elements to understanding. I mean, you need to understand Bitcoin mining if you're going to be in this space. It just makes the world make a whole lot more sense. And we'll answer questions like, how does it work? Can, can anybody participate? And should energy consumption be a concern? We know we've heard a lot of talk about that, but what happens to Bitcoin mining in a bear market? Maybe you've even heard the rumor that mining is a risk at, or at a risk, I should say, of being centralized or captured, you know, captured by the state, maybe stick around because I promise you today we're going to answer all of these questions and more. But before we dive headfirst into the show, I need to welcome you to my fill-in co-host, because unfortunately, Eric, I know you're not feeling well, buddy. I hope you feel better. But in his replacement, I have male supermodel who also doubles as a fill-in co-host. His name is Brian LaRue. Uh, <laughs> Brian, man, welcome uh, to uh, to the show. I, I know Zoolander has his kind of blue steel look, uh, but it doesn't compare to your your blue steel. Can you, can you give me a Zoolander blue steel look? There you yes, go. That's yes, pretty good. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, man, Brian, thanks so much for filling in for uh, for Eric. Are you uh, excited to do the show with us today? I'm very excited, man. Looking forward to uh, what we're going to hear today. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, Brian, you also are our regular producer. You make sure this sound, this show, honestly, sounds top notch, and I, I couldn't do it without you. You know, if people were listening to the show, you know, they heard that awesome intro, love the guy's voice, love the music. You were you were the genius behind the music. If people wanted to get a project maybe mastered maybe they have something to produce maybe it's a song a podcast like are you for hire i am definitely for hire um you can you can visit my website uh, actually it's going to be uh beyond you productions.com spelled exactly how it sounds um and uh, you can go online check it out um feel free to contact me i'd love to be able to see if i can help spruce up your project edit it mix it do anything you need and uh, as, as far as audio is concerned yeah, and this show is is absolute proof. So thank you, Brian. And I got to give a shout out to Blue Studio because we're sitting here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, recording this wonderful show. Actually, the weather's not that bad, but uh, Blue Studio has been very uh, nice to us, generous to us. They often make us Americanos when we come into the the studio here. So that's been an added bonus. But check them out. I want to encourage you if you're if you're in the area, maybe you're listening to this show online, and maybe you live in Tulsa, or maybe maybe you don't live in Tulsa, and you've got some marketing needs. Contact contact them at Sooner Marketing marketingsolutions.com. That's soonermarketingsolutions.com. 
All right. Well, Brian, why don't you lead us into today's show? Yeah, definitely, Matt. Let's go ahead and uh, bring in our favorite Bitcoin miner. Um, he hit, he is and has been a staple on the show and is our resident Bitcoin miner. He's the founder of Naka Motor Partners, Charlie Spears. Charlie, welcome back, brother. Uh, please introduce yourself to our new radio listeners. Howdy, guys, and hello, new listeners of Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. I'm Charlie Spears. I run a Bitcoin mining company called Naka Motor Partners based out of Oklahoma here. Um, we kind of come from the oil and gas space and because Bitcoin mining is focused really on energy, um, we specifically uh, procure stranded natural gas and take our existing skill set, which is running uh, one of America's oldest backbones of energy and um, kind of innovating on that. So that's what Naka Motor does. We put Bitcoin mines on gas wells. And they're pretty darn good at it. In fact, the reason why we brought Charlie in today is not only is he a good friend and he's been on the show regular. In fact, we should probably just make him a co-host. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to mining. And uh, Charlie, I, I thought it'd be a good idea to revisit some of these fundamentals of Bitcoin mining, you know, especially during this time period. Is, is this a good thing to do to remind people of these fundamentals? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot about Bitcoin that's uh, hard to understand. And I will say, you know, I, I've been into Bitcoin for several years myself before I even looked at Bitcoin mining. And it's it's kind of hard to explain. And I think I it took me maybe a dozen times kind of looking at it. So, you know, I'll try to describe some of the important stuff. But really, if, if something doesn't make sense, go and Google it. Look and uh, use educational resources talk to Matt. And uh, it's something that maybe it's not the first time you hear it explained. Maybe it's the 10th time and it kind of, you may uh, be able to understand it a bit better. Absolutely, Charlie. I think that uh, that's a good tip to do. It's a good, some, uh, good way to do it. Uh, first question for you, Charlie, though. Uh, can you explain to everyone in a very simple way what Bitcoin mining is and how it works? Yeah. Um, so the term is Bitcoin mining. I actually... Uh, think we should probably change the language because Bitcoin mining connotes like you're going out and you're extracting some kind of thing out of the earth. But really what Bitcoin mining is, is uh, there's a couple primary ways that the Bitcoin blockchain is secured. One is through mining and one is through the verification of that mining by nodes. So what does that mean? Um, Bitcoin miners, they actually produce the Bitcoin blockchain. Think of them as like actually creating each block every few minutes or so. And that block contains all the transactions that happened in the past time period. And that's added to the Bitcoin blockchain and immortalized um, as more transactions happen. So I like to say that Bitcoin miners are the block producers. They actually produce the Bitcoin blockchain. And, uh, so we can, I'll talk a lot more about that, but I think as you ask more questions, I can elaborate. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's uh, actually, it's kind of leading into my next question a little bit, but Charlie, you know, oftentimes we hear the comparison in this space that Bitcoin miners are kind of like this puzzle solver. And then you've got the full nodes on the network that are kind of like maybe puzzle checkers. Can you explain this relationship between the miners and the full nodes? Yeah. So you have the block producers, the Bitcoin miners, and then you have these full nodes, which verify the blocks that the Bitcoin miners have produced. So you have two primary ways that a blockchain may stay secure. You have the people who produce the blocks, and then you have the people who verify the blockchain. And, I, and it, you say that there's a great analogy when you say puzzle solver here. Have you ever, did you uh, remember taking like, um, uh, early math where you got to do long division, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, remember in like long division, you, it's a, it's a pretty simple math problem, but in order to, you got to show your work, right? You have to do the whole proof <laughs> and it's kind of time consuming. Um, and it can take a lot of, you know, uh, you know, pen and ink and, um, but it's quite simple to verify. So the teacher knows they look at that and like, Oh, that's the right answer. And then they can, if they want, they can go back and see the proof that you did all the work. So the Bitcoin miners are kind of like the puzzle solvers. So they do all this work, which is very easy to verify. And so the work is done. The proof of work is done by the miners themselves. And then the nodes fact, they check it and they say, yep, that's correct. We, we validate that. So that's kind of the big picture of what's going on now. Um, the miners themselves use specialized equipment 
to do the proofs and um, it's called hashing, but we can get into that. Man, Charlie, I didn't mean to laugh. I wasn't laughing at you. In <laughs> fact, it it brought back some really bad memories from uh, my grade school years. Uh, my I was horrible at math. My math teacher was always like, show me your work, you know, like uh, show me how you got to this. And I was like, well, as long as it's the right answer, does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think, but so, you know, you kind of touch on it. I mean, so the, a lot of people describe Bitcoin mining as doing a bunch of complicated math problems. It's actually a very simple math problem and it's a very simple proof. What is hard about it is that there are so many uh, answers, there's so many options for you to get. And so what Bitcoin miners are trying to do is to try to find the right answer and it's a race. Kind of like um, if you ever did those like speed math rounds in elementary school where you're doing who can do the multiplication tables the fastest. Um, that's kind of what happens every 10 minutes. And so the miner who does all the work first or whoever l- discovers the right answer first, they get awarded with new Bitcoin. And that's how Bitcoin is created. And that's how miners themselves get paid. Wow. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Um, so Charlie, what what is so what is great about Bitcoin mining is that basically everyone can do it, right? So what is involved in becoming a Bitcoin miner? Yep. So technically anyone can mine Bitcoin um, as, as the ecosystem uh, grows and as the amount of other people mining Bitcoin grows, the more specialized and larger um, the industry is going to get. Um, so it's kind of like this, you can walk across the country, but no one really does that. If you're going to try to race, who can get to the other side of the country first, you're going to get in a car or a plane. So you mm-hmm. can, even you can mine Bitcoin by hand. You can do the math and you can type that into a computer and submit that. Um, but really, you're, you, uh, Bitcoin mining is done with specialized computers. Think like, you know, um, speed of sound jets that fly f- across the country. And so you have to have a specialized computer and that computer takes energy. And um, some people, you know, get a couple of these and they put them in, you know, their basement or their garage. And that actually kind of works. It's a great way to earn um, some cash on the side and to really help secure the network. Um, But really what we're seeing, especially here in the United States, is the Bitcoin mining industry, which is really an energy and infrastructure and a tech industry all in one, is exploding specifically in states like Texas. And you're, they're building these giant data centers, which, uh, um, plug into unconventional parts of the the grid or unconventional parts of energy production. And um, in order to do that, it takes a lot of capital, takes a lot of power, and it takes some very um, uh, not risk averse um, investors and people to, to do it. it Cause um, you're, you're, you're on the absolute, it's, it's the wild west with extremely volatile uh, uh, price exposure. But as we've seen, um, there's huge opportunity here. I mean, kind of like back in the early 1900s, you know, in Texas, again, the, the wildcatting era of oil and gas, it, you know, grew to define the American economy. And I think we'll probably see a similar analogy for Bitcoin mining over the coming century. No, that's, that's a great point. And, and as wonderful as Bitcoin mining is, you know, it's obviously that the field is going to grow in competition and, uh, and I know anybody can do it, you know, if you got the, the right machines as well, but Anybody can also become a full node operator. And that's, Mm -hmm. we were kind of talking about those full nodes earlier. Uh, Charlie, can you share with people about why that maybe once they kind of go down this rabbit hole a little bit, they, they learn about Bitcoin, they become a Bitcoin pro and, uh, you know, should they consider running a full node? And we know in the space, there's a lot of talk that running a full node actually helps the network. Now, not everybody's going to do it. Um, but for those who are just diehards, uh, why is running your own node a good idea? Oh, this is something I think everyone who wants to go to, like you do, you, you've done Bitcoin 101. So now you want to do Bitcoin 102 or 201. And, uh, and that's a pretty important thing. Running a full node um, looks like this. It's a, it's like a piece of software you can install on an old laptop. You can get a small dedicated computer called a Raspberry Pi that fits in your pocket. And you just install some basic software on there. It's open source. And it runs the Bitcoin code. And what it does is it looks at the Bitcoin blockchain and the, 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 it looks at the blocks the Bitcoin miners submit. And it says, those are correct. This is the true chain. Um, you know, John sent Amy uh, one Bitcoin and we all look at that. And there's thousands of us all looking at that transaction saying that happened. We validate that. And um, 
it's really important. So when we talk about Bitcoin being um, uh, allowing for monetary and financial autonomy, this is not some central bank and this is not um, some central database that says uh, we're going to change a one to a zero. This is um, you yourself sending and seeing all the other transactions. So um, this is one of the cool things. You can buy Bitcoin on Coinbase or you know Gemini, but really then using connecting your own node and sending and broadcasting, receiving transactions with that is it's unbelievably uh, uh, empowering. So that's one of the coolest things about it. Yeah. And, you know, I think another cool thing about uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining and this concept behind proof of work, uh, people hear that Bitcoin uses a lot of energy and sometimes there's a lot of hate, a lot of argument around that, maybe even misconceptions. But Charlie, I want you to share, you know, let people know why energy consumption with Bitcoin mining is necessary and why it makes this idea of proof of work possible. You might you might dig into that proof of work thing a little bit. Yeah. Well, so this, this is a callback why I wanted to, why I think it's good to think of it um, as instead of Bitcoin mining as block production. So a lot of people say, oh, uh, Bitcoin's not backed by anything. And I would say, oh, contraire, the energy and computation that goes into producing these blocks is a real physical world resource that's expended to create something digital and which is concrete in an abstract sense. So um, this, the, all the energy in the world, a lot of people think, and I strongly disagree with this idea that energy is a scarce resource. Um, energy is abundant. What's scarce is our ability to harness that energy and to apply it well. And so Bitcoin mining does use a lot of energy and will continue to use even more energy depending on if you're concerned about the nature of uh, green energy or renewable or not, Bitcoin mining as an industry is the largest uh, and greenest uh, industry by energy makeup by a long shot. Um, and so the energy that goes into Bitcoin mining uh, is actually one of the, com the things, one of the real physical world things that backs and secures the Bitcoin network so that if you wanted to attack the Bitcoin network, um, if you wanted to try to um, create fake Bitcoins, it would take real world assets. And to do that, you would have to expend vast amounts of energy to fake a Bitcoin or to um, or to attack the Bitcoin network. A lot of people say, oh, but well, you know, Bitcoin mining consumes as much energy as the country of Argentina. And I would say it does. Um, but another way of looking at that is the entire country of Argentina would have to reroute its entire energy production to attack the Bitcoin network for 10 minutes. And that's what secures the Bitcoin blockchain. Charlie, you know, I think, you know, speaking of the energy consumption, you know, what are the, what are the, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions um, about Bitcoin mining that, uh, are, are out there and what do you what do you hope people help hope that people understand we about got that we got about 30 seconds before yeah, okay. we gotta go to break too i'll yeah. wrap it up real quick i mean to sum it up i think most people just don't know what it is and so if they knew what it is and what it what what it's doing they would find it more justified as an activity so i think the most important thing is to say uh is for people to realize that bitcoin is worth something and bitcoin mining is the primary mechanism by which Bitcoin is secured. So I think the biggest, biggest misconception is people just don't know what it is. Well, I hope if you're listening to this program and your head is hurting, I hope it's not hurting because I think we're doing a pretty good job of explaining how Bitcoin mining works in a very simplistic way. But you need to stick around because we have a lot more to cover with Charlie Spears. He is our resident Bitcoin miner. Please don't go anywhere because we got a lot more to talk about. We'll, see, we'll be right back. Do you enjoy listening to my radio show, Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore? Have you ever thought about being featured on the show as a loyal listener? What about winning some free Bitcoin? Can't go wrong with that, am I right? Well, today is your lucky day, my friend, because we're building a community for this show. For just $15 a month, you can become a member of the radio show. And in return, you'll have the chance to win $100 of free Bitcoin and be featured on the show. Every month, we will randomly draw one name from the pool of currently paid members and that person will receive $100 of free Bitcoin and the opportunity to be featured during a segment of the show. We will do this drawing every single month. 
In addition, everyone who signs up as a member today will receive a complimentary copy of the Little Bitcoin Book, a great educational read around the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Join today before we close membership enrollment. Go to mattjmore.com forward slash member. Again, that's mattjmore.com forward slash member. Do you have a strategy to obtain Bitcoin on a regular basis? Do you plan to automate your dollar cost averaging? What about getting all or part of your paycheck in Bitcoin? GetHedge.io is revolutionizing how you get paid. Hedge makes it easy to automatically convert your pay into Bitcoin. Whether you're an employer or employee, you can get started in four easy steps. Start getting paid in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin. The great part about using Hedge is you can skip the exchange experience altogether and have your Bitcoin sent directly to a wallet you control. Self-custody is key, and Get Hedge is giving you the power. Hedge is here to make it easy to stack those sats month after month. Bitcoin, it's a long-term play, so what are you waiting for? Start living on the Hedge, and don't forget to let them know that you heard about Hedge from Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Use my referral link at mattjmore.com or you can go to gethedge.io. Again, that's gethedge.io. Short form video content is taking over social media. And with only seconds to capture someone's attention, our team can help you stand out from the crowd. At Sooner Marketing Solutions, we'll produce and publish engaging TikToks, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. If you feel like you're falling to the wayside and missing out on the exposure that you deserve, Click the link in the description to get Sooner results now. The sun, beaches, parties, education, and Bitcoin. This is the recipe for Bitcoin 2023, the largest Bitcoin conference in the world. Ever thought about meeting industry experts? It's the who's who of Bitcoin, and you can't miss it. Join us in Miami, Florida for the annual Bitcoin conference. Use my promo code BTC Radio at checkout. That's BTC Radio. Learn more at mattjmore.com. Mm, I love that music. Brian, oh, you are so good. Man, I, I want to welcome America back because we are a nationally syndicated radio show. One of the few, actually. That's uh, focused on Bitcoin. So if you're new to this show, welcome, because we got a lot of great content to cover. This show is literally for everybody. And, uh, you know, if you're a hater out there and you're a Bitcoin skeptic, hey, you know what? We welcome you anyways. Maybe we'll win you over. I'm not saying we will, but maybe. And if, if we still don't, you can send me a carefully typed out insult and uh, we can talk about it later. But uh, but yeah, uh, in studio, unfortunately, I don't have my handy dandy co-host, Eric Cooper. Um, uh, so on today, I've got Brian Lewis. Rue, he is my fill-in co-host. Brian, why don't you say hi to everybody? How's it going, guys? I am uh, Brian LaRue. That's right. Going and, in. And he is also the guy who made that awesome uh, the theme music, our intros, our outros. And uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, if you've got a project, something to, to get done, like a song or a podcast, Brian's your guy. So, Brian, tell people where, where they could find your, your content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can visit my website at beyondyouproductions.com and uh, I, you can uh, email me, contact me on, on the website. I have a contact page there. I'd love to be able to see if I can help spruce up your project, produce for you, and uh, either mix or master, do whatever you need for for your yeah, project. Yeah, and uh, you won't regret it. In fact, uh, we are actually here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, like I was saying in the first segment, uh, and we are sitting here in the Blue Studio, uh, thanks to Sooner Marketing Solutions. So if uh, you've got marketing needs, hey, hit them up. Go to SoonerMarketingSolutions.com. That's SoonerMarketingSolutions.com. All right, you might be thinking, I'm just tuning in. What the heck are you guys talking about? What is it about Bitcoin? Well, we've been chatting about Bitcoin mining, answering questions like, how does it work? Why does it matter? Can anybody do it? Um, and you may, and I'm not saying you have, but there's a lot of FUD out there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. There's a lot of uh, skeptics out there when it comes to Bitcoin mining and energy consumption. And, and I promise you, we're going to answer all these questions. We're going to clear the air with Bitcoin mining. We're going to kind of dive back into this 101. It is a bear market, so it's a great time to do it. So uh, join us on segment two as we continue this conversation to go deeper and deeper down this mine. We've got our picks. We've got our shovels. But I'm going to let Brian LaRue introduce our um, guest today. He's, he's a regular on this show. So Brian, why don't you tell everybody uh, who we have? 
Hey, uh, so we have today with us our favorite very own Bitcoin miner. Um, his name is Charlie Spears from Nakamoto Partners. And uh, Charlie, thank you for joining us. It's uh, around two on round two of uh, Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Please introduce yourself in your own words uh, for those who just tuned in. Howdy, y'all. And hello, America. Thanks for tuning in to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. I'm Charlie. I'm a Bitcoin miner here in Northeast Oklahoma. We specialize particularly in finding energy assets in the oil field and converting them into Bitcoin mines. So, Charlie, let's let's talk decentralization because that's a big part of Bitcoin. Um, recently, there's been this, uh, I don't know, you could say fear, uncertainty and doubt, and, and doubt about uh, mining becoming centralized. Uh, one of them being that in a bear market like the one that we're in, you tend to see a lot of miners shutting down or, or maybe getting bought up by bigger operations. Is consolidations like this a concern to you? Do, do you think that this is uh, maybe a natural process? Um, this is a natural process. It's inevitable. I mean, I will say it, it's also, there's always something to be concerned about in Bitcoin. This is an uphill um, battle where each year there's some new mechanism where Bitcoin has to prove itself and prove that it can remain decentralized. Um, so right now, because the price of Bitcoin has collapsed, the entire crypto asset space has collapsed. Bitcoin miners whose revenue is paid in Bitcoin, um, they have to convert Bitcoin to dollars to pay real world bills for this brief, you know, a few more years before everybody in the world takes Bitcoin. But anyway, so um, because a lot of these miners are distressed, um, there's opportunity for consolidation or for basically buying up cheap assets. So um, this is a very interesting time where um, it's kind of the first era um, or cycle that Bitcoin mining is more in, uh, institutionalized. So you have conventional um, money funds in, investment funds, um, private equity um, getting into this business. And so some of these Bitcoin miners are publicly traded and Bitcoin miner A will buy distressed Bitcoin miner B's assets. Um, and so what we're seeing is a, is a consolidation process. Um, it's happening more publicly than it's ever happened before. Typically, this has happened during uh, downturns. Um, it's been it's not been as uh, easily observable before because um, there didn't exist traditional financial instruments. Um, so if you uh, if you were not able to pay the bills this month, you were just broke. As opposed to now, there's a lot more complex financial opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I think we will not see uh, any concerns really manifest. Um, I think we can, we can tell, we can look at the, the blocks being produced and who's mining Bitcoin and say empirically, um, the, the, the network remains considerably decentralized. So, okay, that makes sense. And, and I think people are listening to this. They could probably get that, but you know, especially on Twitter, I've been seeing some, you know, fear and, and maybe some misinformation being spread, uh, when it comes to, I don't know, the mining pools and, uh, you know, the idea that's going around is basically first time in history, majority of Bitcoin's block production is now controlled by two entities, those being Antpool and Foundry USA. However, from my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, these are mining pools and pools like these, they don't control the network and they don't really have a lot of clout because any miner participating can quickly change pools if there's kind of any foul play. Can you speak to this and maybe explain mining pools? I can try. I think you, you set it up pretty well, Matt. Um, it's interesting because, you know, I'm a Bitcoin believer, but I also have certain concerns about the future of Bitcoin. I want to say though, that, um, the centralization of pools is not a concern. And I think people who are concerned about that are probably uninformed or have um, uh, poor motives. Um, so in this case, what a, a pool is, um, so you've got these individual machines that mine Bitcoin, right? The specialized computers. And they do these calculations and each of those machines submits the answers and they hope to get the right one. But there's millions of these machines and there's only one winner of, of each block or who gets to the Bitcoin from that block every 10 minutes. So in order to reliably 
um, have uh, income in Bitcoin, pools will form whereby miners pool with each other all their um, computers and they say, well, in aggregate, we've got, say, um, 500,000 machines. If any one of us wins the block, we'll split the rewards. And so typically we've seen the pools be these kind of specialized software companies and the miners themselves be the physical data centers all around the world. And so typically they're different things. In this case, um, you have the pools, Ant Pool and Foundry USA, of whom a considerable amount of their mining or hash rate, as it's called, does come from proprietary operations of the pool does itself. However, a, va- a large amount of that is just people who may, they might even not know where these miners exist who are participating in this pool. And I, as a miner, have participated in some of these pools, but I don't need permission to leave. And what we've seen is historically in Bitcoin's past, whenever you have pools like this get big, because this has happened before, you have miners leave that pool and go do something else because there's huge opportunity to say, well, we're just a pool which does things a little bit differently. And then also, um, Miners don't want to harm the Bitcoin network and miners want the Bitcoin network to be decentralized. And so miners are very incentivized to win a pool like Foundry or Antful gets really big. They're not going to want to participate in that. I am concerned about some other mechanics of how pools work, but um, there's options for that. And that's a perhaps a bit more technical conversation. Charlie, you know, what about incentives? And, um, you know, can you go into detail about the incentive structure structure for Bitcoin mining and why it motivates decentralization? Yeah, um, there's a million ways I could try to address this, but the short version is Bitcoin miners and everybody who participates in Bitcoin um, wants it to remain decentralized. And so um, whenever the network approaches or makes decisions that centralize it, um, the incentive structure is so that everyone benefits more if it becomes decentralized, kind of like, you know, the, the tragedy of the commons, that economic idea of if you have kind of this free common area is going to suffer and be kind of exploited. Well, the tragedy of the commons is inverted with Bitcoin. So everybody using it is actually incentivized on an individual level for it to work and and succeed as opposed to the tragedy of the commons where everyone is incentivized to extract as much for them individually at the expense of the whole. And so Bitcoin mining has an incentive structure where um, the more decentralized it is, the happier and more sustainable a a business or a country or an individual who mines Bitcoin can be. Wow. Amazing. Um, Really well said. Um, Explain, you know what, uh, Charlie, can you explain to the audience what a 51% attack is and maybe go into detail why it would be extremely hard for that to happen? Mm-hmm. You betcha. So 51% attack is kind of a new idea that um, comes with the creation of a blockchain. So um, the amount of Bitcoin mining that happens is called hash rate. You produce hash rate, which then produces blocks. Um, if hypothetically... of the hash rate, 51% of the Bitcoin miners in the world were to collude and say, we're going to create a majority consensus to produce a block um, that we like that basically says we're going to award ourselves more Bitcoin. We're not going to include the transactions of people we don't like. That's And they achieve 51% of all Bitcoin mining. That's called a 51% attack. And um, there's a number of things which could happen in that scenario. Historically, uh, we've seen that it doesn't really work and it's probably not feasible. Just one of the reasons why it's extremely hard or likely infeasible is because it requires an actual physical um, collusion of the actual machines that mine Bitcoin. So these are, it's not like you can just um, pay someone and it's not like you can just write a check and say, go 51% attack the network. Um, because these machines are in every country and they uh, are, they each have their own reasons and their own kind of uh, purpose for operating. And I would say, um, when have the world's countries ever been able to collude um, to take over uh, uh, 
uh, you know, many, uh, much of anything recently. Um, <laughs> right? So I, uh, it's in a way it's kind of betting on um, humanity's incompetence that we won't be able to achieve that. Cause you'd have to go physically right. seize all these different miners all across the world. It'd be much easier to just, you know, go take or go, go invade, you know, Russia in the winter. It's like that kind of angle. Right. Well, you know, Charlie, the, those are all uh, good points. And, you know, when we think about Bitcoin mining and we look at the process, you know, currently Bitcoin miners, when they successfully solve the SHA-256 algorithm, um, miners receive not only a transaction fee from the, the block, but they they also get the new issued Bitcoin. Uh, and currently they receive 6.25 Bitcoin. But in March 2024, they're going to receive 3.125 Bitcoin as a reward. So Charlie, can you share with our listeners what it means when this happens, this Bitcoin having, why is it so important? And, and what, what, what happens to Bitcoin miners? Are they impacted anyway when a, when a having happens? Uh, yeah. So um, one of the problems that the inventor of Bitcoin had to solve was how does Bitcoin come into existence? How is it created and how is it created fairly? And so um, the creation of Bitcoin happens with each block that is mined and that block is given to miners and then the miners spin that and that becomes part of the Bitcoin ecosystem. The supply schedule of how much Bitcoin is issued every day, every year is set for the next 120 years. And right now, about every 10 minutes, 6.25 Bitcoin are created. And um, that monetary policy, because it really is a monetary policy and issuance schedule, um, is set to reduce the issuance of Bitcoin um, about every four years. So the next one is in March, 2024. And because Bitcoin miners receive our income in Bitcoin, our, uh, our revenues overnight will be cut in half in Bitcoin denominated terms. So this is a mechanism. Uh, it's, it is the most um, perfectly competitive. It is the most, uh, um, uh, it's one of the most interesting market dynamics, which forces constant iteration and innovation. Um, and it also is a huge uh, mechanism which increases Bitcoin's price early on. But that's there's much more to that. Yeah, uh, I, th I think I think the impact of the having uh, definitely is um, going to have an impact on Bitcoin miners for sure. As someone who runs Bitcoin mines, um, what has been Charlie your biggest challenge, and what do you see uh, it changing in the future, especially during the having? Yeah. I mean, gosh, where do I start? So, I mean, I, I've, I'm an entrepreneur in other industries, um, run a brick and mortar store, photography studio, um, traditional data mining company, market research. Um, and in all those businesses, being an entrepreneur is very difficult, but I, I can go get an insurance policy for my brick and mortar store. I can open up a bank account for my, for my tech company. Those things a year ago did not exist for Bitcoin miners. And even today they're very nascent. So um, I cannot, me as a Bitcoin miner, I'm not just trying to hook up machines. I'm trying to raise a large amount of capital. I'm trying to find a bank who understands what the heck I do and then have to educate the bank and drive to Chicago to craft a custom underwriter policy specifically for my type of business. So I have to be an expert on every single um, component of what, we love a lot of what we take for granted. Um, so I've, I've got partners and it's a, it's a very lucrative business, but it's also very challenging because all the building blocks that traditionally exist um, don't for Bitcoin miners. And then also we're dual denominating in two currencies. You know, the, those are all valid. I mean, I, I can only imagine the, the complexities and the hoops you had to jump through uh, just to, to be successful at uh, Bitcoin mining to some some scale. Now, we've got about a minute before we got to roughly go to break here. But, Charlie, you've been involved in the energy business and uh, this honestly well before Bitcoin. But how do you see Bitcoin mining and energy companies working together? Do they eventually become one? Yes. Short answer is yes. That's inevitable. Um the biggest Bitcoin miners of the future will be ExxonMobil, uh, Saudi Aramco, uh, you know, Royal Dutch Shell, um, the, the U.S. government maybe, um, because this requires vast, in, this is really an infrastructure play long term. This is an energy play long term. 
Um, it'll bootstrap a lot of what doesn't make sense currently about the economics of renewables. And it'll also allow us to um, build nuclear reactors much on a faster timeline. Now, that might seem a bit ebullient and optimistic, but um, we've seen this happen uh, uh, at an order of magnitude every four to six years in Bitcoin mining. And I think this decade will be defining. Um, so I've got my eyes. ConocoPhillips is mining Bitcoin on natural gas wells, you know. Um, one of the major Norwegian oil and gas producers is already doing this. I mean, this is happening. People aren't talking about it very much. Well, it's going to be huge, <laughs> in my personal opinion. Well, um, if you're listening to this show, guys, uh, and you're on and it's on the radio, maybe you're hearing us on the radio right now, call up a friend, tell them to tune in and listen to this because this is great stuff. And I guarantee you, you guys are going to learn something. But even more, I wanted to encourage you, if you're listening uh, online, maybe YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, no matter what platform you're using, do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, share, let us know how, what, how we're doing, what you think. If you got questions, we want you to be a part of the conversation uh, and tell us, like literally tell us how you feel and maybe shoot us a, a topic that we can cover in the future because we're definitely looking to, to answer your questions. And uh, you can always go to my website, mattjmore.com. You can send me a message there. Please stay put because whew, we have a juggernaut to keep covering. We'll be right back. The sun, beaches, parties, education, and Bitcoin. This is the recipe for Bitcoin 2023, the largest Bitcoin conference in the world. Ever thought about meeting industry experts? It's the who's who of Bitcoin and you can't miss it. Join us in Miami, Florida for the annual Bitcoin conference. Use my promo code BTC Radio at checkout. That's BTC Radio. Learn more at mattjmore.com. Do you enjoy listening to my radio show, Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore? Have you ever thought about being featured on the show as a loyal listener? What about winning some free Bitcoin? Can't go wrong with that, am I right? Well, today is your lucky day, my friend, because we're building a community for this show. For just $15 a month, you can become a member of the radio show. And in return, you'll have the chance to win $100 of free Bitcoin and be featured on the show. Every month, we will randomly draw one name from the pool of currently paid members, and that person will receive $100 of free Bitcoin and the opportunity to be featured during a segment of the show. We will do this drawing every single month. In addition, everyone who signs up as a member today will receive a complimentary copy of the Little Bitcoin Book, a great educational read around the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Join today before we close membership enrollment. Go to mattjmore.com forward slash member. Again, that's mattjmore.com forward slash member. Do you have a strategy to obtain Bitcoin on a regular basis? Do you plan to automate your dollar cost averaging? What about getting all or part of your paycheck in Bitcoin? GetHedge.io is revolutionizing how you get paid. Hedge makes it easy to automatically convert your pay into Bitcoin. Whether you're an employer or employee, you can get started in four easy steps. Start getting paid in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin. The great part about using Hedge is you can skip the exchange experience altogether and have your Bitcoin sent directly to a wallet you control. Self-custody is key, and Get Hedge is giving you the power. Hedge is here to make it easy to stack those sats month after month. Bitcoin, it's a long-term play, so what are you waiting for? Start living on the hedge, and don't forget to let them know that you heard about hedge from Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Use my referral link at mattjmore.com, or you can go to gethedge.io. Again, that's gethedge.io. Short-form video content is taking over social media, and with only seconds to capture someone's attention, our team can help you stand out from the crowd. At Sooner Marketing Solutions, we'll produce and publish engaging TikToks, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. If you feel like you're falling to the wayside and missing out on the exposure that you deserve, click the link in the description to get Sooner results now. Welcome back, America. Ding, 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 ding. It's round three of America's Bitcoin Focus Radio Show. And yes, if you're hearing the sound of coins, well, it's not actually Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not physical, but 
it's it's got a lot a lot for us to cover a lot for us to understand because bitcoin is literally going to change the world uh it's money and if you haven't figured that out you can go to my website mattjmore.com and listen to i think it was episode 70 where we talked about money but I want to welcome, I want to welcome you to honestly one of America's only radio shows dedicated to Bitcoin and possibly even in the world. Uh, truth is, cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Uh, we've made this show for you, so I hope you like it. I hope you stick around, and uh, you know we we cover things like liberty, history, money, technology, energy. There's so many aspects that go into Bitcoin and how to understand it and how to treat it. I mean, we, we've been doing this show for probably almost two years now. Yeah, we started in Tulsa, but now we're national and we got people listening all over the world. So if you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, you know, we're, we're all over the place. But to help me carry on this conversation is the man of mystery, Brian LaRue. He's also my producer who has done a wonderful job with our intros and outros and awesome sounds. Uh, he's filling in for Eric Cooper. Brian, how you doing today? Doing very good, Matt. How learning anything? I'm learning all the time. And uh, every time I, li- I listen to the show again, and, and I'm, I'm just amazed at how much information is going out. And I think people should be be listening as well. So. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I want to thank you for ca- helping me carry these picks and shovels as we dig for this digital gold. Uh, right. We we have a wonderful uh, guest today, but before we get into that uh, and, and bring him back on, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Sooner Marketing Solutions. Uh, we're here sitting in Blue Studio in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And if you got marketing, uh, if you know, if you got somebody that uh, you want to hire for those tasks, well, you know, the sooner marketing solutions.com they're, they're the people that you want to consider, uh, today we're, you know, like we're talking, we're talking about Bitcoin mining. What does it mean? How does it work? And, uh, we've got a wonderful uh, guest today. Who's kind of sharing, spilling the beans, helping us wrap our heads around it. Well, you know, I, I already know about it, but Hey, we want to explain it in plain English. So Brian introduce, uh, to our audience, our guest, if they're just now tuning in. Well, yes, Matt, ex- absolutely. To help us put the cherry on top in this conversation is none other than our fair, our very own favorite Bitcoin miner. His name is Charlie Spears. He's from Naka Motor Partners. Um, Charlie, please introduce yourself, uh, to our new listeners. Howdy, y'all. This is Charlie from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, my partners and I for Naka Motor, our Bitcoin mining company, and we particularly focus on oil and gas and putting Bitcoin mines out in remote gas wells out in the middle of rural Oklahoma. So it's a new new way of skinning the cat, as I like to say. Absolutely, Charlie. And let's continue with this question that we had in the earlier segment. Um, recently, we've heard a lot of talk about the blockchain trilemma. Um, can you share your thoughts on this and how it relates to Bitcoin as a whole? Yeah, the blockchain trilemma was an idea first um, explained by a very smart guy who uh, founded another cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Vitalik Buterin is the guy who first kind of wrote about this. And um, it's kind of like, you know, how you've got like a car and you want to get the car fixed, but you can only, you can't, you can't get it fast, cheap and done right. That's a trilemma. You can only choose two of the three. And so for for uh, what the blockchain trilemma is, is you have three components, scalability, decentralization, and security. And the idea behind this trilemma is a blockchain cannot be fully decentralized, fully scalable, and fully secure. Or at least this is theoretically what is the case. Um, I tend to think it's a pretty good mental model. And... Um, Bitcoin versus other cryptocurrencies has chosen to be decentralized and secure. But the way these things scale is kind of up for debate. That's kind of what if you were looking at all the cryptocurrencies the past couple of years and be like, what the heck do these do? A lot of those projects were trying to solve and throw a bunch of, you know, stuff at the wall to try to figure out how do we solve the scalability issue? Um, So I think there's some really cool um, opportunities for Bitcoin to scale, But that's what the trilemma is, is uh, Bitcoin particularly has prioritized being secure and decentralized. And um, some people think you can get all three. We have yet to see anybody really achieve that. 
You know, you, that's a good point, Charlie. I mean, you, you ha- you've had this uh, conversation and back way back in the day. I mean, it feels like a long time ago, but it may not be. <laughs> 2017, the block wars. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're talking about the block size and how many transactions you can fit into a, a block and, you know, how that it, you know, affects the ability for something like Bitcoin to be decentralized depending on the block size. Uh, but then you got second layer solutions. How, how does second layer solutions apply to the, the trilemma here is is that applicable or are we just talking purely uh trilemma here on the base layer blockchain oh no so that's a great that's a great tee up so um so bitcoin is comparatively slow and dumb compared to other cryptocurrency or other blockchains um but it's very secure and it's extremely decentralized um so when you send a bitcoin transaction there's no limit to how many Bitcoin you can send. So theoretically, I could send, you know, a hundred billion dollars of Bitcoin in one transaction. So um, what is limited is the amount of information and the amount of transactions that can happen per second. But imagine um, if we were able to say this one billion dollar transaction on Bitcoin actually represents, um, you know, 500 million other actions which then kind of all bundled together and are settled in that transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's where you begin to abstract off the base layer. So now you have what is basically a layer on top of the base layer of Bitcoin. And that's what we call a layer two solution. And some people say, Oh, it's gotta be another faster blockchain. Some people say it's gotta be something entirely different. Um, there's one particularly uh, compelling scalable or scalability uh, layer called the lightning network, which um, creates all these channels and this kind of interlinked web where people can send fractions of a Bitcoin to each other. You can send, um, you know, what is effectively one one thousandth of a cent on that uh, in a transaction and have it essentially be free because it's leveraging what is an already secure network of the Bitcoin network underneath it. And so um, I think as the years go, we will see a lot of really interesting scalability solutions. And it's possible that many people might not actually, you know, 20, 30 years from now, they might not use the actual Bitcoin network directly, but they're, everything they do, all the transactions they send, all the money and communication they have will ultimately be secured by the Bitcoin network. Charlie, that's uh, all. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's such a large topic to unpack and, and to dive into the details. Uh, it's going to take more than one episode. But um, man, if, if people are really digging and enjoying what you're dishing out here, where where can people follow you, find your work? Go ahead and share about that. The best way to reach me is on Twitter at CB Spears. And then my company puts out a newsletter um, through our website, nakamotor.io, N-A-K-A-M-O-T-O-R.io. I'm really responsive to pretty much anybody who reaches out to me on most any social media. I love talking about this. I do try to make money off Bitcoin mining, but ultimately my heart is in education. Yeah, and you're really good at it too. So I applaud you for it because that's you are too, man. Yeah, I love this show. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I, I love having you on, and uh, you're, you, I, I hope you continue to want to be a regular and uh, grow with us because uh, you know we're in multiple cities. We're going to keep growing as it is. But uh, Brian, I know this may be a you know a new topic for you, but uh, has this been interesting to you as somebody who's kind of maybe looking at the mining aspect from the outside? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know it's. It's, it seems like a mystery from someone who's not really looking at right. the, the, the details of everything all the time and researching, but, um, but just getting a, a closer look at it, I'm, I'm, it's amazing to see that how close to reality you can really, how close to mining you could go and, and, and yeah, anybody the possibilities, can do anybody, yeah. anybody could do yeah, it. So, it's, yeah. it's uh, quite fascinating, but if you're, if you listen to this show on the radio, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, but Hey, you can always catch us on all the major podcast platforms. And if you want to find those platforms, you can go to my website, mattjmore.com. I've got a bunch of resources there. A lot of things that you can continue your education. Uh, unfortunately, this show is coming to a close, but uh, again, we couldn't do this show without you guys. We, we really appreciate you tuning in we're here in tulsa oklahoma but you know what wherever you're listening to this show same time same place we're going to do this weekly so i hope i just hope that you're going to continue this journey with us because you only learn and you only grow if you continue to dive in deep and what better not what, what, what a better place to do it than here 
Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thanks for joining us.